Hey everybody, Matt Smith back here with you. SEC previews continue on. Today we're talking Missouri Tigers. Five and five team a year ago. Really surprised after predict, being predicted to finish six in the SEC East last year. Finished 500, did not play a bowl game that got coveted out against Iowa, but overall a great debut for Eli Drinkowitz in his first year. Taking over a program that lost a lot, was in very much in transition mode after they kind of bottomed out at the end of Barry Odom's last year in 2019. But a real great start to the Drinkwitz era. The big change is going to be on defense this year. Ryan Walters, the coordinator that Drinkwitz retained from Odom's staff, has moved on to Illinois. And frankly, I, I was pretty disappointed with that Missouri defense last year, last year. I thought they had a lot of good talent, a lot of experience, and it just never came together. They got smoked early and just never really recovered. Only a couple good games here and there. But overall, I think this change was warranted. He, Drinkwitz went to the NFL route, a common theme in the SEC this year. Steve Wilkes is the new defensive coordinator. Defensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers did really well there. Had a year that was a failed stint as a head coach at Arizona. We'll see how he translates his NFL schemes, his NFL teaching style, to working with 18 to 22 year olds. So that'll be the most notable uh, change on the Tigers staff this season was on the defensive side of the ball. We'll start with kind of looking at position by position. Connor Bazelak, the quarterback, real nice freshman season last year. Took over after two games when the Tigers were 0 2. His first start was that huge win over LSU in the game that was moved from Baton Rouge to Columbia um, because of the hurricane. They pulled that game out, and they never looked back. Won five of the next six. He completed more than two-thirds of his passes. Not a ton of touchdowns, only seven last year. So getting that TDI&T ratio is probably big for him this year in year two. But again, you score however you can get it. They got a lot of running touchdowns last year. Maybe not going to be able to count on the, uh, the running game to push it in as much as they did last year with Larry Roundtree gone. But that's what you're looking for in terms of a step forward for a guy like Basilek. As I just said, Larry Roundtree is going to be a big loss at running back. Tyler Brady was a solid number two guy last year, but elevating from a number two where you're carrying maybe 10 times a game to a 20-25 carry number one back in the SEC, that's a big jump. Is Brady's body ready to handle that pounding? We'll see, but that's the plan for the Tigers as they move on from Roundtree. Receiving core, got some really good really good names on that, I'll say. On the, if you do an all-name team, which you might see, they got Mookie Cooper. They got Kiki Chisholm. That that list should be littered with Missouri Tigers receivers. They got some good ones. Cooper's an interesting guy. He's a transfer from Ohio State. Obviously, that's probably the best receiving core in the country there in Columbus. So he kind of got pushed out, was the odd guy out there. Hopes to resurrect his career with Columbia. Could also be the returner, both kicking and punting, as well as contributing in the passing game as well. So Mookie Cooper, a name to watch there. Offensive line, good pass blocking unit last year. Not great against the run. Roundtree had to do a lot of the work himself. A couple camp battles there on the left side. Right side's pretty stable coming back from last year's team. Front seven, huge loss there with Nick Bolton, the inside linebacker. He was a stud tackling machine there. They're going to move on from him. Chad Bailey is the guy who's probably going to be his replacement, but just huge shoes to fill there. Defensive line, pretty good depth, not a ton of stars there. Kobe Whiteside might be a name you guys know who's been around in the defensive line. So, you know, they, they got some pressure last year. Overall, not great. Need to be better against the run. Um, that's probably the key there because, again, I think they can get, get some pass rush, but they were not good against the run, especially late in last year. So if that unit's going to be formidable, that's where the strides are going to have to come. Secondary as well, they're all right, not great. One starter back at corner, one start back at starter back at safety. Um, kind of neutral on that unit. They'll be all right, but Missouri's never had great corner play, great safety play. They've relied on their front seven to do most of the damage through their, their time in the SEC now. So we'll see if that group can take a step forward. But again, not overly concerned about that, given that's just not a group they've really relied on for that program to thrive in the past eight to ten years in this league. Take a look at the schedule, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. A couple tough non-conference games. That opener was Central Michigan. Jim McElwain's up there. You guys might have forgotten that if you don't pay attention to the Mac, the former Florida head coach. Done a pretty good job there in his first couple years with the Chippewas. They're coming into week one, into Columbia in week one. He knows the league. Possible upset alert there for the Tigers, especially with their week two game at Kentucky. Massive game. As, as we talk about, or I'll talk about later with the preseason poll, Kentucky just edged out Missouri for finishing third. So I think the league, at least the media, might lean Kentucky there. But Missouri, having ended a long losing streak to the Wildcats last year, now they got to go to Lexington. And the winner of that game can say, all right, we get a shot to, again, maybe not catch Georgia, 
but we have a chance to finish second in this league. Both teams host Florida later in the year. So again, just a, a massive week two tilt between the Wildcats and the Tigers there in, uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. Moving on, they got an interesting road trip in week four to Boston College. Uh, BC's got a pretty good quarterback as well, Phil Jerkovic. That's a pretty interesting battle there between Basilak and Jerkovic. We'll see how that shakes out. But again, two tricky non-conference games for the Tigers this year. We'll see. They could they could lose them both. They could go one and one. It's probably the most likely scenario. Two and zero, of course, very much on the table. But a couple tough non-con games. Rotating game is AM. Haven't seen them in seven years. They play each other obviously almost every year in the Big Twelve. And then um, the first three years in the SEC before the, the rotation kicked in. So it's been seven years since they met. And it hasn't been to Columbia since 2013 when Missouri won a memorable game to clinch their first SEC East title. So that's the rotating game. So not, not a great draw for the Tigers there. A couple good things for them. They'll get Florida late in the year, November 20th. Uh, it could be cold in Columbia in late November, I'll tell you that. So the Gators might not be in their element. And if Georgia's wrapped up the league and maybe that game's for second place in the East, you might have not have a fully dialed-in Gators team. So maybe a chance to steal one there for the Tigers. So... Again, overall, a couple tough non-conference games, a and the rotating game. So a pretty tough slate, even given the SEC East is very down this year for the Tigers. Season prediction, I'm bullish on this team. I think they go to Lexington in Week 2 and get the win. I like the quarterback situation at Missouri much better than I do at Kentucky, at least early on. So I think they get a win there. I do think they take an L at Boston College. Really like the job Jeff Halfley did in his first year. At BC last year, kind of programmed on similar trajectories, kind of just middling around 500 type teams for a few years, but some nice progress last year, even in a weird COVID year. So I have a loss there. I have losses to A&M and Georgia, probably both top 10 teams. But I'm going to say Missouri steals second place in the SEC East. That Florida game I just talked about late in the year, again, I'm not sure how interested Florida will be if Georgia's got the division wrapped up. I'm going to say the Tigers steal that one to get the 6-2 and two in the league after a win over Arkansas. That's 9-3. and three. That's a heck of a year, too, for Eli Drinkowitz. And, you know, he said only this is only his first time coaching a team he's, uh, he's coached the year before. He only spent one year at App State, won the Sun Belt, moved on to Missouri. So we'll, we don't know how he's like in second years, but I'm bullish given how he performed in his first year at each of his two stops so far in his young career. So that's the Tigers for you. I have them in the Music City Bowl here in my hometown in Nashville. They were supposed to come here last year. Again, the game got canceled due to COVID. So I think they'll be back here. I have them playing Purdue, a team they played a couple years back in a home-and-home. believe they split that series. So a lot of black and gold coming to Nashville late December for the Music City Bowl. So that's the Missouri Tigers for you. Please let me know your thoughts below in the comments on Eli Drinkowitz's team. Follow me on Twitter. You can reach out to me there, at MattSmithCFB. Written preview is up at southernpixian.com, and please check out the rest of my videos on the SEC's 14 teams previewing the 2021 season. Thanks for checking this one out, and I will I'll talk to you all soon.